Hey everybody, it's Wojo. Let's take a look at some of the problems today in Delta Math so you have a better idea of what you're doing so it's not so confusing and then you guys just rock it and it's easy peasy. You know the rest. So let's go ahead and take a look at some problems and uh, hopefully from there you guys will be good to go. Alright, today what you're going to be working on is trying to, you know, look at an equation and then just understand the two parts to the linear equation. Remember in y equals mx plus b we have a starting number or our y-intercept that just tells us where we're starting at. And then we also have a slope that changes over time that has the variable in it, the mx. What they're going to do is they're going to give you a situation and they're going to ask you what is the y-intercept or what does the slope represent. And so your job is just to look at the equation. In mine it's d equals 220 minus 55t. And say, okay, of these two numbers, which one of them is the y-intercept? Well, remember the y-intercept is the number by itself, the constant. So that means the y-intercept of this one is 220. And then it's going to give you a multiple choice question of what does that represent. Now I do know that you guys will get different problems. It won't be exactly like this. But it's all going to be kind of the same setup. And then it's going to say the y-intercept. And it's going to give you some options. Uh, for me, the options are the average speed, the distance from Jack's house, the number of gallons, or the total time. Now one of the things you want to think about is the y-intercept is kind of like the starting amount. And so in this one it says Jack is going to drive from his house to city A without stopping. An equation that determines Jack's distance from city A. So that means we're starting 220 miles away and we're getting closer at 55 miles every, if T represents hours, every hour. So that 220 is going to be that distance from Jack's house to A. So our starting distance. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to submit my answer. And then I'm going to say yes, and you'll notice I get the green check mark. And then it explains uh, a little bit about it. So if you get it wrong, you can always look at it. But here's the graph of it. It started at 220, and it was going down 55 every hour. It looks like it took four hours to get home. It didn't ask us that. Uh, but that's what we're going to be doing, is we're going to be looking at problems, uh, like this one here. It's going to give us an equation, and it's either going to ask us what the slope is or what the y-intercept is. So the y-intercept is 52 in this one. The slope, I can tell, is uh, 6.5. But because it's minusing it, we know that we're losing 6.5 of something every hour. In this case, it looks like the charge on his battery is a percentage. So it looks like we're losing 6.5% um, every hour. And so it says the slope of this function is negative 6.5. And that's going to tell us, I'm going to look at something that talks about I'm losing something for every hour. So in this case, it's battery charge per hour. So when I look at my choices, the rate that Nathaniel's phone gains charge per hour, well, since it's negative, I'm not getting that. And I know these are cut off for you, but let me pick it here. There's one that says the percentage charge that Nathaniel's phone loses each hour. So if it talks about slope, remember to look for the ones that talk about gaining or losing each hour or for every this or for every that or per. Um, because it's negative, that means we're losing it. And again, we got that one right. Um, each one of these are going to kind of look like this. It's going to either ask us what the slope is and what the slope represents. After you get through a couple of them, hopefully it's not too bad. But remember, the slope is the number that's with the variable. So in this one, the slope is 65. And the slope is always going to talk about something per something. So C, without even reading this, I'm going to assume C is maybe cost or something. And it says, yep, that's the total cost. And so my slope is going to be my cost per hour because T represents the number of hours. So it looks like he charges $85 just for coming to your house. That's your Y-intercept. And then he's going to charge $65 per hour. Then our goal is just to pick which one that is. So I got the number of hours. No, that's T is the number of hours. I got the total cost, that's C. Um, and then I got the set fee for the house call, that would be the 85. And then my last option is the hourly rate charge. So that's the only one that talks about a rate or something per something. That's how much he's charging. Uh, once you go through a couple of these, hopefully you get the idea of it. Uh, but that's really what you're doing today, is just getting a sense of if I look at an equation, what can I tell about that equation just by looking at it? So without even reading the story, I know that I'm starting at 35 something and I'm losing 350 every X. And this one X is cups of coffee. So 
I'm losing $3.50 for every cup of coffee. It looks like maybe this $35 is like a starting amount, maybe a gift card. Yep, he's given a gift card. It's got 35 bucks on it. Well, every time I get a cup of coffee, I'm going to lose $3.50 off that gift card. So the slope is negative 3.5. You could put 3.50. And that looks like it's going to be the cup of coffee, the cost for every cup. So it's not the total number of cups. It's not the amount of each cup. Oh, wait, maybe it is this one here. The amount each cup of coffee costs. So every time I buy a cup of coffee, it's going to cost me $3.50. And there we go. So hopefully that makes some sense. Good luck to you guys. As always, if it get, you get stuck, just uh, send me a message, either email or private message through Google Classroom. And uh, if you don't feel like doing that, just wait till you come to class and ask me in class. I'll be more than happy to help. You guys enjoy your day. Have a good one.